from early and I'm one of the reference librarians here. And so we host this series every week because we believe in the open exchange of ideas and freedom of information. And whether or not you agree with everything you hear in here or find it in books on our shelves or in the books up here, the DVD up here, we believe that you should have the opportunity to grow and learn from different perspectives. So we provide that for you. So if you feel the urge to host one of these, um, then let me know and we can take up the schedule. We're already forming the schedule for our fall quarter. And next week, we are going to have some writers from the Raven Chronicles. Are you familiar with Raven Chronicles? No. It's sort of like a, a zine magazine um, for multicultural Seattle, right? And so they're going to be sharing some of their works, some of its poetry, short stories, etc. And it's going to be titled Still in Light, Publishing and Editing, a Seattle-based multicultural magazine since 1991. So, but today, please join me in welcoming Matthew Perry, who is the events chair of the Vet Student Veterans Association and the Seattle Stand Down Outreach Coordinator. Among many hats I wear, there's probably more than hats about this. Yeah. So, when I learned how to do public presentations a long time ago, they didn't used to have cell phones. Since then, People invented cell phones, and one of the things I tend to do when I start conversations is I invite everyone to join me in doing the thing that I tend to forget to do, which is turn the ringer to off. So if you have not turned the ringer to off, this is a good time to do so, and you can have some peace and quiet during the conversation. Perfect. If your phones are silent, so I'd like to say thank you for coming this wonderful sunny Thursday afternoon to the library over here at Seattle Central and talk a little bit about a problem known as homelessness among veterans. Uh, the way I got involved with this project, which is known as the Seattle Stand Up, is that a friend of mine who was a student at Seattle Central years and years and years ago was asked to come help with the Stand Up since it was um, here at college, and it was started by members of the Student Veterans Association. And I got asked if I could come help. And I said, well, I don't know what you guys are doing. He says, well, you know how to make coffee? I said, yes. And he said, perfect. So I got dragged to this event, and I've been involved ever since. So coming this December, it will be my fourth out of five stand downs that I'll be involved with. And I've graduated from making coffee, to try to reach as many people as possible in the community, both homeless and at-risk veterans and people who can volunteer or support us in other ways. So the most important thing is to understand about the Seattle Stand Down is that we are all volunteers. In the Seattle Stand Down, we have absolutely not a single staff member who gets a penny or more for their services. So we have a whole list of people that can be found on our website, which is the seattlestanddown.org. And all of them, from the lovely Rebecca Murch, who's our executive director, all the way down to me, are volunteers. Most of us are veterans or people who have been involved in the military in one way or another. Spouses, girlfriends, boyfriends, uh, children of, parents of, etc. And people say, so why do you have a stand The reason we have a stand on here in Seattle is that we still have people who don't know where they're going to be sleeping the next time. And some people say, well, that's not really homeless. And we say, yes, it is. If you don't really know where you're going to be sleeping tonight or tomorrow, that means you're homeless. You may sleep at mom's place, you may sleep in your car, but you don't have a place to call your own, and that categorizes you. We're trying to find a way to make sure that those who serve this country don't have to worry every night we're going to be sleeping. The way we do it is we invite them to come in to Seattle Central, and we grew from a one-day to a two-day event where we offer them services. There are three core parts in this service, which include housing, employment, and legal services. Uh, research done by smarter people than me shows that if you take care of those three lines of thoughts, these three uh, core projects, people will not be homeless. So 
So people tend to, if they have a place to stay, if they have a, thing, a place to go to and do some work, and if they don't have any legal problems, they have their bottom them down, they will probably not be with us. Yes, feeding people and clothing people is part of the deal here too, but the three important things is to find a place for people to stay long term, not overnight, not shelter somewhere where they don't know if they can be there the next night, take care of a job where they can afford to rent a place if need be, and take care of whatever legal issues they may have. So the way we do it is we have a whole bunch of volunteers that come together and work 11 months out of the year putting this whole thing together, and then show up for three intense days right here at Sales. On the day before the actual event, which will be a Wednesday this year, December 16th, 2015, our volunteers will unload trucks with equipment, clothing, tents, sleeping bags, anything you can imagine. And we'll set the place up for the next day's events when the veterans will be invited in. And when they come in, we have a little registration table, which seems to grow every year, with many dedicated people, a lot of them who are students either here or at Seattle U or some other college around the area in the social and ser services program. And they help us run our guests in and get some demographics. Because apparently, demographics and statistics make sure that you can get money from grants. And since we're a nonprofit, we have to either get grants or donations from somewhere and we have to justify what we do with these demographics and statistics. So for the first time ever, we got a handout this year, and it even includes the demographics that we have served for the last stand down, which was known as stand down before. And some of the demographics are amazing. So they are broken here to male and female, or men and women. But some of the numbers I looked at, I couldn't believe. But I'm actually going to start from the bottom of this list. And it says that 13% of the people came seeking for services at the standout last year, 13% of them reported having a bachelor's degree or higher. And you say, well, gee, what's going on? Well, we're not trying to figure out what's going on. We're trying to figure out how we solve this problem. So I can't tell you what's going on, what's causing people to lose their housing or not to find housing in this area or other places around the country. I can tell you how we're trying to solve this. The way we're trying to solve this, again, is stand up. Housing, which is one of our key elements here, is a big problem because you can't just assume that it's like a hotel. You can't walk into the stand down say, I need a place to stay, and you can find a place that I have to move into. It's a major undertaking most of the time. By partnering with agencies, both on the federal, state, and local levels, and nonprofits, we have people who do this every day that know places where veterans and other homeless people can find housing. And they're there talking to the veterans, trying to figure out what's the place, best place in town, which area in town, Maybe not even in Seattle, maybe anywhere in King County that might work for these gentlemen and ladies. So the housing, number one. Second thing we've worked on is employment. And employment can be very interesting too. If you're homeless, it's kind of hard sometimes to keep a job or find a job. Who wants to give a job to someone they don't know that can show up every day if they don't know where to sleep every night? Makes it very hard for a lot of people. One of the things that uh, we've been working on is creating resumes, offering interviewing technique, crash courses. Um, I'm not sure what else to think to say as far as the class that we offer during the stand. And then what we've done in this last standout is offer people a chance to come on the second day and interview after the first day. They created a resume and figure out what to wear, offering them some clothing if they need them. Uh, 
the Seattle Central College School of Cosmetology has offered people the chance to get haircuts, get their nails done, so they look great for the next day and get job. Part of the demographics um, say that that 48 of those people, 48% of all those people came had college degrees. Being here at school, we actually have students who are veterans that are homeless. And you think, well, how can someone go through school while being homeless? Well, apparently after going through some of the wars and fighting and training and whatever else you go through in the military, going through college may be the easy part. But navigating the homelessness is not, because a lot of these guys and ladies are still homeless a year afterward I think in school. Again, hopefully, with this day and now, we can figure out ways to get out of the business of helping these people by doing these things now. So, so I was going to say a whole lot of different things. You know, a lot of people will be here and ask lots of questions all the time. But not a whole lot of people showed up yet. So one of the other things I'd like to do is I'd also like to promote how you can help. So you can always volunteer. And on our website, there's usually a button. There it is. It says volunteer. And then the way it works is we have general volunteers and service providers. So general volunteers are all of us. People are there to serve a hot cup of coffee. Danish, go through the pile of clothes, which we're trying to make sure that doesn't look like a pile of clothes when you walk in, or whatever else you may need, and help the veterans when they come in. And then we have the service providers. Service providers are people who have specific specialties. They work for nonprofits, they work for schools, they work for government agencies, and they have specific, some works for the Social Security Administration, knows how to help people get a new copy of their Social Security card. Unfortunately, in this country, you cannot work if you do not have a copy of your social security card. Knowing your number is good, but not perfect. You still have to have the card. We don't usually create our own list. We use Seattle, King County, United Way to help us in this matter. And what happens is if you push on that volunteer button under general volunteer, it will take you over to the United Way of Seattle, King County, and then there's sometimes a list of different positions and I'm not going to see if it's up yet because it's not. And uh, then you can choose which areas you would like to help with and then basically you show up on the day for the shift you volunteer for and we try to reward you by not only giving you a wonderful opportunity to volunteer but also giving you a few things to take home with you. So usually we have a nice t-shirt and more importantly, we will give you a nice handshake and major thank you. And the satisfaction of knowing you help another person and trying to escape the cycle of living, not knowing where you may sleep or eat or have a nice jacket. The service providers, again, are the people who have the specifics, and that is open usually year round. There should be an email there, there is an email there contact the, uh, the Seattle stand on if you have specific services that you'd like to present at the Seattle stand -up. And one of the things we do at the Seattle stand -up that other places don't necessarily do is, if you're a service provider, you have to provide a service to the veterans on the day of the event. So we will not give you a table if you intend on telling people to come see you in your office in two weeks. We would like you to do something on the day of the event where the veterans can walk out and say, this is the service I actually received from the service provider. So lawyers have to talk to veterans, uh, doctors have to see patients, etc., etc., et None of these come back to my office in two weeks. Today you're going to get service. Mm -hmm. And we have in the services, everything like I mentioned, medical, dental, eye doctors, Lots and lots of stuff. 
The neat thing about doing this at school, here in Seattle Central, is that we have a ton of people, from faculty to staff to students, whose knowledge and experience in these areas. So when the programs are offered here, we can utilize the nursing students, we can utilize the optometry school, uh, the dental program to help us in all these wonderful things. And it works really, really well. One of the things we try to do is we try to figure out how to pay for this here. So, like every other nonprofit, we have a way to donate, which is somewhere on the website. And I'm not going to go searching through the whole place now. Oh, oh, I know. It's under, oh, there we go. And then one of the things we're doing this year new is we're having a pancake breakfast. So this probably won't make it onto the YouTube before the pancake breakfast, so you guys missed for this year. You missed a huge chance to meet Nate Boyer from the Seattle Seahawks who will be there and at the Seattle Standout itself and showing his support. Nate Boyer, if you don't know, is a brand new Seattle Seahawks player who is a former U.S. Army Green Beret. And if you haven't met him yet, by the time you get to see this on YouTube, you need to make a point of trying to reach out and find him. I do hear that he has his own website. So search for it. You might find out some very interesting things. Other than that, there's a donate button somewhere in this wonderful at Is the next bottom. To yeah, oh, I think it's at the top end at the bottom. There yeah. wasn't one at the bottom. Oh, the top next to about is the third link underneath the Seattle stand down. Ah, there we go. There is a button that says donate. So again, talking about our pancake breakfast and ways to donate and buy the ticket. Yeah. But other than just that, we do get a couple of grants, uh, donations every year. One of the big ones is from the federal government, from the Department of Labor. It pays mostly, almost, all, com, that grant pays almost for the entire stand -in. People say, what? How much is this grant? Well, it's not really all that big, but being a volunteer, a veteran volunteer-led program, community-driven, as written on this wonderful website, we don't actually have a lot of expenses, and we don't spend money where it doesn't need to be spent. All of the money that we can put right back into the program goes into the program. And this is where I get to do something where people go, why don't you talk? So the Seattle Standout is not a nonprofit. In fact, the Seattle, non the Seattle Standout is not really an organization. The Seattle Standout is an event. The group that operates, that puts together this wonderful thing is known as One Less Mountain. And I have to give them a little shout out here. Because One Less Mountain is another group of volunteers that started through students at Seattle Central about five or six years ago. And this is where I get to do a little history lesson. About five or six years ago, there was a student that came to school here named Sam Barrett. And um, if you've never met Sam Barrett, you may want to wish that he did because he is a wonderful human being who did a lot of things for this country. And when he finished being a soldier, he decided to go back to school and learn how to be uh, a social worker of some sorts. And was going through the social worker program, I think that's what it's called. Social Human Services. Social, social Human Services Service Program, thank you. So he went to that program, and as part of the program, he had to come up with a project. And this is kind of where the Seattle Standout actually was born. He decided that the project he wanted to do would have to do with um, homeless veterans in this area. And he approached the school, the school president, and other people in their wisdom gave him the blessing and gave him the space and support. So Sam Barrett not only started the Seattle Student Veterans Association, the Student Veterans Association in Seattle Central. He started the Seattle Stand Down, he started One Less Mountain. Sam Barrett has done a ton of things to do with veterans in and around the Seattle area. Which is a very good point that anyone in this room or anywhere in this country, if you think you have an idea, don't let it go to waste. 
because when Sam started, it was a class project. And it's now an independent event that stands on its own two feet every year for the last five years, four years, has grown from a one day, few hour thing to a full two day event where over 300 men and about 50 women warriors come in and get help. And that's just the people we help. That doesn't count the people who are providing all this help. That also get to get something out of all this, other than satisfaction. Practice, gratitude, camaraderie, a lot of, a lot of wonderful things. So I said this, the Department of Labor has the big grant, and then a few veteran organizations, and again, I'm going to throw names here, uh, the Japanese Nisei Committee, has been very big supporters. Um, a lot of uh, a small uh, groups, other other groups have provided smaller donations, but there are many out there. And of course, individuals all over Seattle King County, and out, even outside of the, this area, have provided donations through our website, which every dollar makes a difference because it goes directly to help these veterans. So yes, I just beg you all for money. And if you have a dime or two, please feel free to send it to us. But remember, when you do that, you're actually not donating to the Seattle Stand Down. You're, Seattle, you're, stand, you're going to get the information that's donated going to One Less Mountain, which is our parent organization here. So I just want you to know it's not a mistake. It's the way we operate. Other than that, I really wanted to see if there was people who had any questions about the Seattle stand down in school here, or people who had questions about uh, not just the Seattle stand but federal issues at all. Specifically, the, the stand up uh, like that specific one. What you said earlier about the, I think it's a 13% of veterans have uh, come to the event. It was 13 or 14. It was 13% had a bachelor's in some sort. Right. Yeah. 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 Some sort. And that really struck me because I've been hearing about, and maybe this people doesn't know me, but lots of institutions who, I don't want to say prey on the like folks who have you know GI money yeah. and things like that. Like, and I don't want to call it any private institutions or anything like that but then aren't really delivering in the quality of like, education, like the skills that mm -hmm. folks are leaving with. And so I just, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I think um, you would be, I think, I think it's accurate in the federal government, right? They'd be some maybe just do something and get um, trouble for yeah. some of their predatory uh, student mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. behavior. And I think, you know, they're, they're, they're doing probably what, what we should do in some ways in terms of recruitment. These, these schools are savvy, they know they're expecting that a thousand new veterans will be making in the Seattle area their home mm. uh, every month. Wow. You know, uh, and, and so we should be. <laughs> and so, you know, we, uh, people say, you know, folks who can be you know, um, served out here in, in the local, local bases, you know, they, they fall in love with the area. And so when they're done, they come to where they decide to locate to. Uh, so, yeah, we, we should be providing services. And I think hopefully we, we can capture more of these veterans coming in and give them the training. But yeah, that might be part of like when we said like why, why you know we yeah. need this private money. It could be that some of these folks have degrees that aren't worth it. Um, but it could be also like done yeah. the same about the the struggles that some of our veterans may be working mm -hmm. with. There's also the yeah, other, depending on where they get a degree from, like I know different universities, as far as how much effort they put into their students that are closer to completing whatever program mm -hmm. and actually mm -hmm. connecting them with job providers yeah. in the community is another yeah. yeah. big big thing because those universities have to be paper mills, I guess if you look at it that way, okay, well here's your degree, but they can follow the internships, or the phone numbers, contacts, job fairs, stuff like that. And I think a lot of people don't know, you know, because even when I came here to register for California, I came here for like a week to an apartment or register for school, and I hadn't been to school in such a long time, just navigating an actual brick and mortar building, finding the offices, getting the forms, talking to people can be a little daunting, although it's part of the process, and I think what a lot of veterans miss is that they get like the easy application in classes from 
maybe a less reputable institution. institution, and then I'm just like, oh, this is easy. Like for me, it took a whole day to register for like 15 minutes <laughs> just to figure out what was going on. And, and what was hard too with like Tony Diaz, right, the VA rep, I just happened to see the sign outside his door, and that was really the only thing, because I didn't know who to talk to, you just, it's not like a greeter or an information <laughs> center. I, I mean, there's an information yeah. center, but you just walk into the building and you're like, okay, <laughs> And so I found Tony and he like, helped me do everything. But things like that, I think a big part of being somebody that maybe has been in the military six or 10 years, but you're older now, you know, mm -hmm. is that you're not coming, like when I was in high school with community college, if you wanted to go there, you were going to the local one, like at the high school level already, they started working with the community college. To help you get registered, the high school told you how to do it, or they would connect you with someone. But coming around in the military, especially like me moving here to California, it's just you don't really have that info. You have to like go find it. It's not like it might have changed for the military. So when you're in the military, you've got lots of paperwork, lots of things you're doing, but it's always very like direct organized. Yeah. You know, here you do this, you fill out this paper. Yeah, they don't do that. We could we could be a little bit better at that. <laughs> yeah, because I think that's what a lot of them are looking for. Like a lot of veterans is just somebody to help guide them, because they're used to that lifestyle where it's every day, you have like a plan of the day, you have a schedule, it's like, mm -hmm. and it can change. But basically, it's like, eat here at this time, this time, this time, go here at this time, lunch is here, you know, da, 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 all yeah. the way down to the end of the day. Even to the point where, like, financially, if you get in trouble, the military involves itself in your personal finances, and your legal problems, anything that comes up, you get a traffic ticket, the military is involved in it, mm -hmm. making sure she pay it, or serve whatever time, so. Mm -hmm. They're really not used to that, and I think they get overwhelmed. So what is something that we could do to, to help in that process? Like, you said that you just randomly <laughs> happened to see the sign on the door. Yeah. But what what would have been the best case scenario when you walked in? And maybe not like, you can't afford to have like a greeter. <laughs> no, <laughs> no we're working on it. I think we are working on some of those things. Yeah. yeah. Like something like that. It's just the way that the building is set up. So like I said, at the high school level, and maybe it's the same for the local high schools around here, I'm not too familiar, but back around from, if you're going to the community college, there's only so many, and they work with the community college and getting you in there. It is difficult, especially here, because it's certain schools, like, I don't want to say that they're veteran, well, they have a veteran program, right? Like, there's a veteran program, and I don't want to, it can be small, it can be just a couple of staffers, right? But it's very easy to locate them. Like you go on the website and there's just a link. It's like mm -hmm. veterans. Click here and they have a whole thing just for you. And about so we have new veteran transcripts. Section on our website. Yeah. That's live. good. That's a yes. bonus. Yeah, it just got added. It just was made live recently. It, um, it, Dylan King is working on it. In yeah. fact, since we're talking about that, yeah, we'll go ahead and show, and show it to people. And I think we're working on also like just, it's just where the best space is going to be. Visual, you yeah. know, something mm -hmm. to see. Because I saw. Well, Tony let me do the rest of it, the SBA and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, just gonna look it up because the only reason I even got in contact with him is I just emailed the admissions actually and just told them I was a veteran. Oh, there you go. So yeah. Under veteran <laughs> benefits, it says veteran services. I'm gonna or you know, under, where, did you, where did you go under for that? Which drop down? Pay. Pay? Oh, yeah. So on the green banner. On the green banner. Yeah. Under which one? I think it's under services now. Because you looked up there. I haven't seen it here yet. Yeah, the veteran services. services. Uh, it may, oh, it did. Same, it did add the link. That's so. the new one. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it takes okay. you to the same place. So and then some of the few things that I've completely got redone is from this page on, it has a lot more information. And the green boxes on the left hand side of the screen are all links to other pages. So, for example, since I belong to the student veterans group here at school, I like to uh, point out that we are now officially uh, mentioned on the school website by name. And more than that, uh, we have, there is a link on here to our own website, which I will not click at this point, mm -hmm. uh, just to spare you all the agony of having to figure out how to withdraw from that wonderful website. <laughs> um, you can do that on your own. But it talks a lot about the things that are at the school on this entire thing. So like the, I'm partial to this specific page. But for a veteran coming to school, there's everything from the veteran benefits from taking classes here, which was not as easily to find, easily find 
to find it before. Yeah, that was impossible. That was, was one of my big questions. Including the green. <laughs> so we're, we're making progress. Yeah, <laughs> including the green uh, links to specific uh, programs through the VA benefit for education. And then, of course, there's other funding supports and so on on here listed. You know, I wonder too on the other side because you know you have a couple of major bases in the area, right? You have Lewis mm -hmm. McCord, you have mm -hmm. Bremerton, of course. Uh, like all the bases have an educational office, right, yeah. to some degree. Yeah. I was wondering, I don't know because I've never been in those bases specifically, but in all of those, you always have flyers and pamphlets mm -hmm. for like Phoenix or the George <laughs> Washington International yeah, College they, College yeah, University. They yeah, they do. So what? I mean, especially for those in the area, how hard would it be to make a pamphlet directed specifically at veterans to put in their educational offices? Or so we got the stand that already. Yeah. I'll actually forward that to PIA. That's a great idea. Yeah, great idea. Yeah. So I can tell you, as far as the stand down, going back to stand down four, which was the one we just passed, this also was the first year where we invited some colleges to have a table, which kind of went a little bit away from our original concept of mm -hmm. you have to be a, providing an actual service today uh, at this specific event. And we had representatives from a number of colleges in the area, mostly our college in Seattle, uh, in South Seattle, and I don't think North made it, but um, we had a, ta a couple of tables set up with information for people coming in to the event about what they can do also to get back into the educational side of things. And that was a wonderful thing because the people staffing these tables are mostly students operating in, in for this school of called court, the, the uh, outreach team um, and stuff like that. So not only do you get to get the information about how to get back to school, you get to meet some of the students currently at school and get the information firsthand from them about what well, classes work, which classes did not work so well, what do you do here, what do you do there. The information you cannot find in the pamphlets, the information you cannot find on the websites. So that was a very great, a good thing, the, the personal connection, the reaching out and seeing one another. And of course we handed out a bunch of pens and uh, a few other things like that, which was making people really happy. Um, but you know, as far as the stand up, we seem to be growing, which is not necessarily always a good thing, because we are actually trying to figure out a way to eliminate the need for the stand up. And this is where I get to say good things about some of our politicians. So, Senator Patty Murray sent representatives from her office to the last stand down. Uh, Mayor Ed Murray sent a representative from his office. And they were there, they talked to veterans. They talked to service providers, talked to the volunteers. They wrote notes, they took them with them, and they were working on some of these things. In fact, uh, we just passed Memorial Day, and in Seattle, uh, Mayor uh, Murray has declared on Memorial Day, uh, made a proclamation that, that was a homeless veteran service day. Uh, one of the local service providers, Bread of Life, made a big uh, meal for homeless veterans so they didn't have to be out on the streets on Memorial Day thinking about people that they were with in a service that may have passed away or died in service, but got to be together as a group and feel connected to one another. And it, it, that is a way to do that. And this is what Stanham offers people. It provides not just the volunteers that are there to, to support the veterans, but also the veterans coming in for service. This is not something that the veteran coming in is facing someone who doesn't know where they're coming from. This whole project, this whole event, is put together by people who are connected to these veterans. So when a veteran walks in in the morning, and I've been there at 7 o'clock in the morning because I couldn't make it before that, and the veterans are already standing there waiting for us, and they see us coming, and they are, have a smile on their face, and they ask you, can I shake your hand? Can I give you a hug? It's not because they think that there's something different in there. They know you're there, you're just like them. And this is what it's all about. This is a chance for people to come and connect to our veterans and realize these are people, just like any one of us, who may have found themselves on hard times. And one of the things that 
Rebecca and Rachel who've been putting together this wonderful event have put is a quote well, I'm going to have to find in here from one of the veterans last year that basically said something about the fact that he was being seen and there it is so he wrote that on the exit poll he wrote thank you for reminding me that I do matter because a lot of times in our, in our society, people look down at people who are homeless. They look down at people who may be at risk of being homeless. And they say, well, you're not working hard enough. You're not doing this. Not. Well, that doesn't help solve the problem. And the idea is we're trying to eliminate the problem. We don't want to have people sleeping under a bridge. We don't want people wondering where to get a sleeping bag, where to get a meal. We're trying to figure out how to deal with homeless. So being here in the library, where we have conversations on social issues, I don't have answers to why people sometimes choose to not sleep in a house. But I tell you that those who do want to have a place to live should always have that option, especially people who gave so much to this country. So, and I, I really like the fact that, not like some of the other conversations associations I came to, this is not so much to feel today as a presentation where I just sit here and talk. This is what I like. I, this is what I think the council social issues should all be about. People should come, be able to come in, ask questions, talk about things, discuss. I like the conversation part of the title a lot more than the presentation part of this. So I really am happy people mention stuff. Yeah, I had a question about, uh, oh, John, you just let me mind. Um, So you have people that offer services that day, right? mm -hmm. haircuts, resumes, to job interviews, and things like that. And veterans are registered, right? What happens after the stand down in mm -hmm. terms of tracking? I guess is the best so way to say. So you see, there's a great question because we didn't used to have a lot of that when we started, and we figured that really it does make a difference. What do we do on the other 11 months of the year when yeah. we're not focusing on specifically on that three days thing? So one of the things that I know not being completely at the top of the food chain is that we have started collecting demographics. We have started trying to find out ways to check more and see what's happening more around. Uh, one of the things is we can't ask people for like contact information necessarily because they don't always have it. So it's like can't ask someone for an address if he's homeless because they may not have an address. You can't send them a letter next six months down the road and say, hey, please send and fill up the survey. We have uh, tried to get involved in the count that happens um, and finding out how many people are still sleeping out at night, where people are sleeping. Um, trying to find out by asking other organizations that will deal with both homeless veterans and homeless people in general, what they see that we can do to help. And one of the things that some of the members of the team, like Rebecca and Rachel and a few of the other great people there, uh, Ryan, I have to mention him, have done is they reached out during this the, the year and went to, I uh, can't remember what, 10, 10 City 3, I think it was, that was hosted at. Seattle Pacific University and said, we don't have a way to do a stand up right here and now, but what are some of the things we can take care of right this second for people? And while they were there, they found veterans that were in uh, 1073 and helped, I believe, one person get a new driver's license or an ID, which they could uh, get before that. Um, Someone else had, a, I believe, a DD-214 that had to be replaced. DD-214 is a military form. It's issued to military personnel when they separate from service. So that's a piece of paper that's very important to veterans to have. Uh, stuff like that during the year. And uh, another thing that happened this year, there was a veteran that I'm not even sure how he got in touch with us or how we got in touch with him, but he needed some clothing for job interviews, and um, some of our team members got in touch with them and helped them find some clothing and got him a haircut and 
had a nice meal with him that day, and he's now uh, on the process of finding his way out of being in a shelter into going back to having a place of his own. And that's stuff that we don't have completely set up yet, because we're still growing, but we're figuring out these things as we go along. People give us ideas, we try to see how we can work them into this. So, so my question was kind of related to, yeah. to his. Um, so I was curious about the, the job interview aspect mm -hmm. of the sales stand down. And so you mentioned that you have folks who will come and interview the veterans who have spent right. the previous day prepping their resume, mm -hmm. et cetera. And so I was wondering what companies are there and do you have any idea of how many folks were able to actually get employment that day? I don't know the name of the companies. I know there were a few. And I don't think we have that in the demographics of how many people are actually assisted at that day for jobs. Um, also, the demographics are age, type of discharge, mm -hmm. um, some, some of the areas they serve. For example, 65% of the men that work out the last day of stand up served during the Vietnam era, on or after. Um, the women, 50% served during the whole Gulf War era. Well, not even um, actually have to be a statistic, but just yeah, your but, observation. Uh, there were few, uh, quite a few companies, not as many as I'd like to see. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're watching this on YouTube or anywhere on the internet and you are running a business or you know someone who runs a business, veterans make excellent employees. They have a lot of training in many aspects. They're great leaders. And I urge you to consider hiring veterans. So if you know of a place that would like to hire, We'd like to hear from you. And again, there's a way to contact us on our website, which is seattlestanddown.org, and I'm going to keep pushing that and pushing that and pushing it. One of the things, me as a student here in Seattle Central, um, I want to do, that has to do with the stand out, and has to do with being a student in Seattle Central. And I'd like to get a lot more of our students here involved with helping in this. So one of the things I've been talking to Elliot, who's our next, uh, upcoming president for the Student Veterans Association and some other people at the, the school is, I'd like to start a program where those of us who have a shirt, fancy shirt, or a nice tie, or a nice pair of slacks, or shoes, or know how to get a hold of some, can bring them in on specific dates and donate them so the veterans can have clothes for interviews. And the idea is, we're not gonna set up a box and you don't just get to come put stuff in the box and walk away. We're going to set up tables on specific days. We're going to tell you where we are and when we are there. And you can bring what you have, and we can both look at it. And if you think it's a great shirt, and I think it's a great shirt, we're going to take it. But if, you don't think, if we don't think it's really a great shirt, we're going to ask you to reconsider. And the reason we're going to do that is we don't want you to just bring stuff that you think is good. We want all to agree that it's a good item that can be really useful for some. And when we take that item from we're going to invite you to come join us when we do hand those out. And one of the things that I think will make a big difference here is some of these students that have no real knowledge of what's going on when you're on the streets will get a chance to see what's going on. And some of those students that do know what's going on when they don't have a steady living environment can teach those who don't know. And being here in Seattle, we do have both of those people in this city in this college. So I think it's a really great system to do that. Uh, in fact, I'm going to throw in a tagline. I'm going to call it Suits for Success. And uh, so if you have suits, shirts, ties, remember to look me up. And we're going to try and do some of those collections throughout the year. I get to see over your shoulder the time. So I get to say, it's time to kind of wrap it up. So again, you know, I'm making lots of fun here, and it sounds like I'm very light on the subject, but the subject is very serious. There's so much things that can be done to help people, and these are people who, at one time or another, and this is not my saying, I'm using someone else's word, signed their name on a blank check that says that they're giving their all to this country in service. Okay. So it's not an exact quote, but basically these are people who stepped up 
and said, I'm there to help this country and whatever it needs in protecting it or its citizens in times of war or conflict or whatever. These are people who deserve better. They deserve better than having to figure out where they would sleep the next night, where they sleep, where they get the next meal. So I really urge everyone who sees this, hears about it, to try and get involved. It's not really a laughing matter. It's a very serious issue. But when you get involved, the things you get out of it are well, that, I'm going to turn it back to someone else here. Oh. Any of you? Anyone wants to let Let's just thank Matthew. Thank, thank you. you. I only have two of these handouts that I have around, so if you want one, I have a good one.